Good news, everyone. Mr. Page here with another battle-tested deck. Today we're using Is It Phoenix? As you can see, we're set up for the final boss. We'll get to that game in a minute, but first let's take a look at the deck. Okay, so I, I played with the Is It Phoenix in the last rotation before War of the Spark came out, and we've got a couple new additions here. Sahili, really good with all of the cantrips. And I guess the only other new card is Finale of Promise. Which is nice because you can do this x equals 2 to single-handedly bring back a phoenix. Because the copies actually count. So you do x equals 2 and you recast like an opt and a charter course. Or you have a lot of different permutations of instants and, and sorceries. And that'll bring all your phoenixes back. And the, the main reason why I'm interested in trying this deck again. Wasn't a huge fa fan of it last season. But... All of the Planeswalkers running around are really vulnerable to the haste of the Phoenix. So I thought this was worth a shot at attacking all the Narsets and, and Baby Teferis running around. Uh, unfortunately, in practice, my only loss on the way up to my the final boss here was to a Jeskai Super Friends list. And unfortunately, Narset, when you don't have Phoenix, just shuts you down. Chart of Course, Radical Idea, Opt, Tormenting Voice just horrible when a nurse sits out and then baby teferi my opponent played that right after the nurse set which kept me from opting on their turn to even just get the card that way and baby teferi also blocks final promise you can't cast the cop the copies because the final promise is still in the stack it's not timed as a sorcery so this just does nothing when teferi's out so like in theory, you're good against Planeswalkers if you have your Phoenix, but when you don't have access to a Phoenix, it's pretty bad. Especially considering if you try to cast three spells to get a Phoenix out to kill a nerf set, you're, you're just w wasting card draw. So it's kind of awkward. It might still work out. I did crush a few Esper control decks who are just touching into Planeswalkers, but the super Planeswalker-y decks, I'm not sure. I guess most of the Planeswalkers you can hit, so... I. Eh, I'm still on the fence if this deck's great or not against Planeswalkers. Sideboard, we've got a handful of counter spells, a Narset's Reversal, which I like casting it on Jumpstart cards, specifically Chemister's Insight. When they when they're flashing it back, if you Narset's Reversal it, it's basically a counter spell plus a copy spell because the jumpstart ability will still exile it. It doesn't actually go back to their hand. You've got an extra Lava Coil for against creature decks. We're bringing in our own Narsets and some niv mizzets to fight control people. We've got Fiery Cannonades for the, to help defend us against the Rush decks, and Entrancing Melody similarly to help against the, the smaller creature decks. So let's get at it. Let's see if we can defeat the final boss and win this event. Going up against Mr. Mainstream. Okay, so this is this is decent. We've got plenty of, of mana and And we've got our goblin. Who can then dig us possibly into stuff, possibly into a whole bunch of lands and we'll lose. Turn one Diagraph Ghoul, not what I expected. I have not faced this kind of black rush deck yet. We'll see what our final boss is up to there. Not surprising to get to rest. He's probably going to take our charter course. He might take the shock to defend his tutu, but no, he did. Conquistador. So let's start with, do we want to discard, I guess is the question. And that you would only want to discard if, you, if you're hoping to hit a phoenix, and I think... I think in this case we just want the extra cards. Because we can't get three spells to actually cast the Phoenix anyway. So we'll just load our hand up here. We drew a shock anyways. So 
So he's playing kind of a suicide back throwback deck. Suicide black, rather. Excuse me. I think the straight 2-2 two is better than the 1-2 the with the drain, because the goblin can eat this guy. Let's just cycle these off, see if we can draw something a little more useful. So speaking of preying on all the Planeswalker decks running around, this guy's one-drop black deck is certainly trying to eat Planeswalkers. I think I'll just trade one of these off. I want to keep one around to keep our, our uh, two mana spells cheap. I'd love to find a Lava Coil. Beacon Bolt, that's really good. That's super good, actually. We'll start with the opt and then probably beacon bolt twice. So we can actually go get our treasures and then cast an extra spell this turn too. So we'll do the tormenting voice first. I don't need a second black. The black's only there to cast the other half of Dispersal. Discovery Dispersal here. And we'll use one of our treasures to get rid of this spawn. And I think I'll, I'll keep my guy back on defense. Just take this. Nope, you can hear Henry there in the background. He probably wants to go outside. I will be right back. Sorry to my opponent. Sorry to you guys. Well, I'll edit it for you guys. You want to go out, Henry? Back just in time for the rope to appear. Apologies to our opponent. Dispersal looks really good here. Get rid of this spawn. I think I'll start by jump-starting a radical idea. And we'll fire off the dispersal. Dispersal is super good once you empty your opponent's hand. Ooh, we're getting told. You've been told. Looks like we're doing the same turn again. I don't really want to trade the discovery though for a one drop. I'm going to try to find a Drake or a Phoenix. <laughs> the game insists that we cast Dispersal. I think we want to keep the land in our hand in case we get another jumpstart card. I'm just going to pass here. We'll keep Dispersal up. We're getting a little low. We need to find some actual action. We'll dig again. I want to do better than just one for winning this guy. We are drawing a ton of lands. You can get the Sahili out, but can't cast anything afterwards. I'm going to play her though just to be defended against uh, Duress. 
for another toll. This should be fun. And I don't think he'll be able to attack into her. Where I'm at six anyways, I'm kinda happy if he senses attacks at her. We're down to two. Ruin Raider. Oh, there's some action. What do we get? Unfortunately, you have to pay X equals 7 to actually do Discovery Dispersal. It adds the two sides together. That might be what we're doing, though. Okay, we have a shock for the instant. And then we can chart a course, I guess. That might be better than going all the way up to Dispersal. So let's do X equals 2. Do the shock and... I guess we'll do the tormenting voice. We want to pitch that steam vent anyway. Get rid of this guy. Get all kinds of creatures off our Sahili. We can pitch the Phoenix to this, and he'll come back for the combat step. Leave the op just to get another servo. So we got plenty of blockers. We'll send the send the guys who can attack in. Unfortunately, the Phoenix doesn't come out until after your main phase, so you can't Sahili a servo to give it haste. Okay, so Cannonade's definitely going to be good. Melody's probably going to be decent. I want the Coil, too. We just want the cheap interaction. What do we want to cut? Could probably trim Radical Idea. And an Opt. Makes it less likely to bring our Phoenixes back, but this seems more like a... Like the Phoenixes aren't the all-star at this point. In fact, maybe I'm supposed to cut a Phoenix? I don't know if I'd go that far. We're just switching some of our card draw into burn. So those can actually work to the three spells. Can't keep a one lander. Maybe if it had an opt, but it didn't. Sahili. If I had three lands, it might be worth keeping her, but where I still need land as well, I don't think it's worth it. Because he's going to be putting pressure on us too, so... Good chance he could just attack and kill Sahili. Looking for a third land. Shock's good to see too, though. We'll just hit the bigger guy. Lava Coil's also good against this guy. He won't get his card. Alternatively, I could Tormentic Voice here and try to hit a mana for Shock. Keeping the Coil for... Uh, the demon guy, whatever he's called. Probably a good idea. Well, yeah, let's try to hit our land drops. That's unfortunate. But if we're missing land drops, we're going to have a really hard time winning this game anyway. So I think digging there was right. Another shock. I think I'm going to stick to the plan and try to find a mountain. Well, sometimes your mana base just beats you. 
And I mean, true, we could have just fired the lava coil off, but... Sword pointed. This is a pretty good card. Okay, so decline as he can have it. You can have that. Is that going to do more than three damage? I think we're just going to let him have them. At this point, we're just hoping to draw land and, and our pyroclasm. So he's not lethal. Can I have a mountain? Ugh. We just really need the mountain. No, we're not winning this game. Let's go to game three. When we're on the play, it should go a lot better. So if I had taken it slow and steady, I probably could have burnt his creatures and stayed even. Unfortunate that we, you know, there were no more lands in the top 10, 12 cards. I don't know how far we dug, but I think we were losing that game anyways. Would have taken him longer to win, but I don't think we would have come back. So we got the Beacon Bolt. That'll help alleviate any mana flood we get this time. Kind of funny that we get stuck on two lands, and now this game, potentially we lose to draw in too many lands, but... I'm actually probably happy that he duresses us there instead of playing a, a two-power one-drop. Yeah. <laughs> Found all the lands! That's magic for you. I don't know what our opponent's doing over there, though. Polar opposite of last time. Shock that he can have his card, but exactly what we needed. We get some card advantage. I'm going to play the mountain because he knows about it. He might duress us now. Plague Crafter. Same reason, just gonna use the lava coil so that we're immune to duress. Doesn't trigger raid this time. We got a toll out of him. I think we're gonna let this thing beat us up for a while. Yeah, I'm just gonna shock this guy. Really important to get him off the board though. I like this guy's deck. It's a nice original deck. I haven't seen it before. Maybe it's making the rounds. Maybe somebody did good with it somewhere. But it might be a new take on the aggressive decks. Well, he got his hand empty. Keep the falls to pitch to the charter course. One spell, two spells, three spells.
just lower his pressure as much as we can here. And get our Phoenix hitting him to try to end the game. Ooh, timely duress. I think it's better to take that because I don't want to leave my guys back to block. We'll get her out. We'll let her take a hit too. Again, I just want to end the game, so we're gonna smack them for five. See, he gained us four life, and is ready to make a servo if we do, do draw a spell. And I'm fine with leaving only one blocker, because if he sends both at her, we, we gained another four life. That's fine. And we have lethal swing back. Time to come up with a so new he has to block with whatever creature this is. I guess it must be a removal spell? Or he's just dead. Flash Death Touch. I don't know what that does. Gives an attacking pirate plus plus one a Death Touch. Interesting. I think we got this game in the bag here now, though. Just throw him in the graveyard for card advantage. I guess we'll take a goblin. This game is over. So interesting take. I don't know. He seems like he's probably pretty strong against the pure control decks, but more middle ground decks like this one. As we can see, like he he crushed us game two, but game three there wasn't especially close. All right, so that was a quick look at is it, is it Phoenix in War of the Spark Standard? I'm Mr. Page. I hope you enjoyed this strategy page on Is It Phoenix. See you guys next time. Oh, before you go, if you don't mind, could you hit the subscribe button? It really helps me out, and it'll actually help you find more good videos like this too. So it's a win-win situation. I'd appreciate it. See you later.